Hello YouTube, welcome to my first video of suggestions passed to the developers. Basically, how this is going to work is at the start of the video, I'm going to talk about what got added and afterwards I'm going to talk about the history of the planes that got added. So whoever doesn't really care about the history of the aircraft can just click off basically. The vehicles that got passed for the Americans is the a from Skyhawk. For the British, it is the Douglas Phantom F3, which is basically the F4J, but for Britain. Japan gets a Lockheed F104DJ. China gets the AT3B. Italy gets the Maki C206. France gets the Dassault MD454. Sweden gets the Saab AGS 37 Vigan. And Israel gets the Israel Aircraft Industries Kifir 2000. So let's start with the Americans with the a from Skyhawk. This model boasts a several improvements over the previous iterations, including the much more powerful J52 P408 engine, a larger cockpit canopy for superior pilot visibility, a ribbon type drag chute to slow down the aircraft on landing, and a square edge stabilizer to incorporate installations of the IFF antenna, as well as a reworked refueling probe and engine starter system. The A4M also doubled the ammunition capacity for its dual 20mm Colt Mark 12 cannon, and incorporated highly advanced radar warning receivers, jammer transmitters, and bombing systems. Production of the a Skyhawk began in 1969, with the delivery taking place in early 1971. The last A4M was built in February 1979, with all active USMC light attack squadrons incorporating the A4M into their roster of active duty aircraft. The A4M would go on to serve with the USMC until early 1990, upon which it saw usage with several reserve units. The British get the Phantom F3, which is basically the British F4J. After the UK deployed a squadron of F4 to the Falklands in 1983, the UK needed to fill the empty space in its home air defense with new aircraft because of the delay of the new tornado ADV. They eventually decided to buy ex-USN F4Js with the US Navy recently adopting the F-14. There were many F4Js and even F4Ss in reserve or storage. The US was very hesitant to sell its F4Ss to the UK, so they decided to buy the F4Js instead. The choice fell on 15 airframes, which were then completely rebuilt in the US and brought almost to the F4S standard. F4J was used as the basis for the heavily modified FGR2 and FG1. But this time the UK decided against a heavy modification and so the new and probably best British Phantoms are fairly stock F4Js. Instead of Royce Royce Pay engines, they retained the General Electric J79 10B engines, which had less power on low altitudes but could provide way more performance at high altitude. They also had better engine response and after burner ignition time. They also required smaller air intakes, which made the aircraft overall more dynamic. Most of the American tech were also retained, with only minor modifications done to the compatibility with the Skyflash missile, the SUU-23A gun pod, and the rest of the British Phantoms. The Westinghouse AUG-10 radar was a very big improvement over the old AUG-11A and 12A. It was still kept, even if it meant a lot of work to make the Skyflash missile compatible with it. The crew also had to use US flight helmets because the avionics and electronics were modified to fit British helmets. In 1984, the 15 planes were moved to Great Britain and were assigned to the 74th Tiger Squadron of the RAF, which was especially revived for that purpose. In 1987, the tornado entered service, which meant that most British Phantoms were retired, and eventually, in 1991, the F4J of the United Kingdom took to the sky for one last time. Most of the 15 aircraft were sadly scrapped, while one was lost in an accident. We sadly killed both pilot and navigator. The Japanese got the Lockheed F-104 DJ Ico. With the introduction of the F-104 J into the JSDF, it was clear that an advanced trainer was needed to ease these pilots into Mach 2 high performance interceptor. The F-104 D was obvious choice, and a total of 20 F-104 DJs were built by Lockheed and sent to Japan 1961. While the F-104 D was powered by the J-79 G-7A, the F-104 DJ was built with the J-79 GE-11A turbojet. Though both engines produce the same thrust figures, unusually, while most two-seat F-104 variants strive to retain as much capability of their single-seat counterparts. The F-104 DJ was primarily used as a trainer in flag characteristics of the Eco. The NASAAR F-15J-31 radar set was not equipped on the two-seat F-104 DJ. In addition, the air data computer and autopilot was also omitted from the aircraft. The F-104 DJ, however, retained very basic combat capability with its wingtip Sidewinder stores. The F-104 DJ likely also had its underwing pylons wired for Sidewinders, much like the F-104 J, and shared a lot of commonality with the single-seat counterpart, including the removal of bombing-related equipment and wasn't equipped for mid-air refueling. 
you should also be noted that while the JSDF service, the F 104 DJ was never armed with weapons, but it will still have the same ability to carry out combat duties if need be. The most notable difference in the F 104 DJ compared to the F 104 J, however, would be two seat tandem configuration with the instructor in the rear seat. Other changes include the nose rear steering, retracting rearward, and a 25% larger vertical stabilizer for your stability. Weapons capability remained largely the same. However, the M61 Vulcan was removed in order to create space for the rear seat pilot or instructor, and the F104DJ additionally wouldn't be capable of using any Sidewinder pylons. Performance wise, the F104DJ performed generally the same as a single seat counterpart but lost a lot of range due to the reduction of fuel tanks. The F-104DJ would be retired alongside a single-seat counterpart in 1986. China gets the AIDC-83. The AIDC-83 had proved to be quite a capable trainer and attack aircraft for the ROCAF, so AIDC attempted to capitalize on it with a modernization program to create a newer ship-killing attack and trainer aircraft. In 1987, AIDC took aside the 83, numbered A26, and modified it for basis of the upgrade program. The upgrade included a newer heads-up display, two multifunction displays in the cockpit, a hands-on throttle and stick setup, MIL STD-1553 avionic data bus, a AN-APG-66T radar from the F-16 Fighting Falcon. The aircraft was capable of carrying a pair of AGM-84 harpoons or Haisong Feng-2 anti-ship missiles on the inner wing pylons. The addition of the MFDs allowed for the guidance of the AGM-65B Maverick missiles in the ground strike role. This modified AT-3 was designated the AT-3B. Additionally, the XA-3 number 209 was modified to the same standard as the A-3B. The A-3B was able to demonstrate its capability when during military exercise it had performed a launch of the Haisung Feng-2, hitting the target ship at a range of 60 km. However, both the ROCAF and the ROCN remained uninterested in the A-3B's capabilities and thus no A-3B modernization program or new built aircraft were ordered. The sole A-3B, however, almost ended up seeing combat when during the height of the tensions in the Third Taiwan Strait crisis, the A3B was temporarily activated by the ROCAF and made combat ready at short notice. The crisis, however, subsided and the aircraft returned to testing. Italy gets the Maki C206. The Maki C206 was a project to increase the wing area of the C205 and make it all in one piece of alloy with only the removable ends, this to make it more robust and more maneuverable at high altitude. The fuselage was almost completed, but was damaged by an explosion and stored, and was later destroyed by an Allied bombardment. France gets the MD-454 Mister. The Dassault MD-454 Mister IVN was a night fighter and an all-weather interceptor, conversion for the Mister IVB, which was intended to upgrade, which was intended to upgrade the IVA and provide domestic jet fighters, although the F-86K was available for purchase. It first flew in 1952 with the APG-33 radar. It was cancelled in favour for the more promising SMB-2 and the Vortur 2N. The aircraft survived and is now conserved at the Air Force Museum in Clermont-Ferrand. Sweden gets the AGSF-37 Viggen. During the Cold War, information was crucial for nations looking to deter any aggressor from attempting to structure a coordinated assault. In Sweden, the philosophy of patrolling and documenting its surroundings was cornerstone in its military doctrine. Ever since the founding of the Swedish Air Force, reconnaissance aircraft and their divisions have served an important role along with the much more well-known fighter and attacker divisions. The vitality of scouting continued after the World Wars and with sub-designing indigenous aircraft for Sweden in mind, recon modifications would always follow alongside both attacker and fighter aircraft design. The sub 37 Viggen was no different, being designed with reconnaissance in mind even before the first flight took place. After the AJ-37 had been put into production, Saab immediately focused on turning the airframe into a photo reconnaissance platform. However, to the requirement of maritime radar reconnaissance, as well as the need for aerial photo reconnaissance, Saab decided to split the task into two separate aircraft, the SH-37 and the SF-37. During the 1990s, both of these variants were modernized to better accommodate a multi-role capability giving rise to the AGSH-37 and the AJSF-37 respectively. The AJS 
F-37 modernization would first enter service in early 1996, having 14 out of the 27 aircraft converted to this variant. Israel against the Kefir 2000 The Kefir 2000 was a prototype fighter designed for the export market. However, it being a prototype means that it did in fact fly in Israeli colors for a while during its testing phase. The aircraft in the image here would later be sold to Ecuador as a Kefir CE. It is a further upgrade of the previous Kefir versions, featuring the same J79E1 engine and Conars that we know from the Kefir C7 in-game. However, to the has received strongly upgraded avionics, allowing it to perform much more as a proper multi-role fighter. From what I could find, the mentions of the Kefir 2000 was in 1992, when the vehicle was unsuccessfully offered to the Philippines. First export success would have to await until 1999, when Ecuador became the first customer of the Kefir C10. Upgrades over the C7 as follows, a new wrap around glass cockpit, an in-flight fueling probe, and a larger nose containing a highly optimized set of advanced avionics. The modernized Hotas cockpit includes an improved HUD two multifunctional color displays, an upfront control panel, and support for helmet-mounted display system. The Elta ELM-2032 multi-mode airborne fire control radar enhances the aircraft performance in both air-to-air and air-to-ground missions, and gives the Kefir C-10 the capability to carry Rafael Derby Active Radar homing missile, as well as the latest versions of the Rafael Python IR homing missile series. At the time of the Kefir 2000, that would have still been the Python 4 and not the Python 5 that the Colobian Kefir C-10 are compatible with. The aircraft is also compatible with the Python 3 missile. These upgrades finally allowed the Kefir to find and track its own targets with a proper pulse Doppler radar and also gives us access to advanced radar guided air to air weaponry with the Derby a Fox 3 missile. The aircraft can pretty much be considered to be a first generation fighter with these upgrades albeit still a fairly modest one, limited by a missile count of only four. This aircraft would also allow Israel to step in into the Generation 4 scene with its own unique aircraft and has certain balancing options for Gaijin to play around with so that it would not be OP. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and thank you so much for 700 subscribers. I'll see you guys in the next one.